organization called People for Animals. Many of you may have heard about it. Uh, so we'll get to know more about People for Animals and the work that uh, Madhvi does. Uh, and this also is for children, but it's very interesting, especially the kind of experiences that she has. Um, so she has been volunteering for PFA since the COVID uh, lockdown started. And uh, she works on developing their uh, school outreach program. And um, she will tell us more about it today. So welcome, Madhuri. Thank you so much for making the time today for this. All yours. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just to let everyone, and <laughs> I will continue on my laptop. Yeah? All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. OK, great. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for that nice introduction, Uma. and. Um, I just want to give you a little brief idea of the work that PFA does, in particular the school outreach program. So maybe we'll just jump right in with a sort of presentation that gives that a kind of introduction to PFA's work. Um, I'll just start that off. Uh, can you all see my screen okay? Is it clear? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So, um, so People for Animals Bangalore is, runs a wildlife hospital, a rescue center. And uh, this cute little creature, many of you may know what it is. It's a slender loris. And um, it's nocturnal and also lives in trees. And as you know, Bangalore has lost its tree cover, it's sort of become more and more rare. And now it's only found in these tiny pockets in the city, um, for example, the IISC campus. So we've made it a little mascot for the school outreach program. So, um, so just to clarify, we've, you know, we are going to use this term urban wildlife since people for animal. So uh, basically the basic work that we do is rescuing, treating and releasing urban wildlife. But it sort of sounds like a contradiction, right? I mean, city and wildlife don't go together. So most of us think associate wildlife with a forest somewhere far away. So I was, I was just wondering, can you guys think of examples of wildlife that lives with us in the city? Snake, snake. Yeah, snakes, of course. Great. Anything else? Birds. Uh, Birds, obviously. of course, yes. They're all around us. We see them every day. Any squirrels, yes. So any other things? All, all sorts of insects. Huh? Yeah, exactly. There's so many small, tiny things that we forget. They even live with us in our own homes, right? <laughs> so wildlife is really all around us and so some some folks have a little bit of confusion on which animals are included in wildlife so just to clarify that so we are not talking of pets and domestic animals that are completely dependent on humans and live with them we are also not talking about feral animals uh, like the stray cats and dogs you see on the road uh, we are talking about truly wild animals you know like birds monkeys squirrels anything that can you know flourish even without human beings so say all human beings magically vanished from bangalore all these wild animals would flourish <laughs> they don't need us at all we need them so so that's where pfa comes in and that's the work that pfa does um so here's just a you know just a random selection of the range of different mammals reptiles birds uh, that we see in the city and that PFA has rescued and released. So you can see it's, you know, even some very surprising ones that you may not have realized live here. Um, so let's get to a basic question. So why are we talking about urban wildlife and why do you think it is important? So anyone has any ideas? Why, why should we pay attention to it? Madhvi, the silence is representative of our ignorance. So please. Oh, okay. So, I'm so sorry. I thought maybe I lost you guys. <laughs> Last connectivity, right? Yeah. Okay. 
nobody is no but no yeah. yes yes exactly um so i mean one argument that oh. is with any animal welfare organizations is sort of just the compassion argument right that um you know just as an ideology you know being compassionate towards all living things that's one side of it but there's a much more um you know prosaic Mama. argument about sorry uma you were saying something uh, yeah uh, 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 yeah. Was asking something. yeah go ahead apex yeah go ahead yeah the the process of urbanization has led to the encroachment towards the uh, you know forest area yes. so that's how it became important it became yes important. yes correct correct you're right it's basically we have to realize that even though we forget living in a city we are very survival is dependent on the natural world right so the health of natural ecosystems and wildlife plays a huge role in that is critical to our survival so it's really in our own self interest that we should pay attention to urban wildlife yeah so do you agree with that or, so that's a very important argument um and this wildlife offers many what are called ecosystem services uh, i'll describe a few so starting with plant polly, pollination of plants we've all read about this in school in our science right so there are lots of insects and birds that pollinate plants particularly our food plants so many of the fruits and vegetables we eat and we take for granted are actually pollinated by these insects and birds so without them they we wouldn't have this food then of course we've also read about this in science uh, dispersal of seeds so you know many creatures eat the fruit and drop the seeds in various places and from those seeds trees grow so actually this results in a huge number of trees growing we think of new trees growing only if human beings plant them but that's not true a large number of trees are actually planted by uh fruits i mean fruit eating birds and mammals like you can see in the picture and of course we all know the importance of trees right um we need trees for breathable air to lower the temperature to uh, prevent water runoff right so the, it's critical uh animals also do a lot of cleaning up so lot of animals are scavengers they eat dead things so dead rats or even stuff out of our garbage heaps and in that sense they provide like a free cleaning service for us you know human beings and the last they control pests so many of many of the animals eat um, other animals that human beings consider pests like rats or mosquitoes right so for example a barn owl which is a type of bird eats um you know up to 300 rodents every year so a single bird you know keeps that reduces the population of the rats similarly insect bats that come out every day in the evening eat up huge numbers of mosquitoes and this is something that happens every day and so it really provides that balance and keeps the population of these pests that we consider pests in check yeah so does this make sense did this um, you know um, does this sort of show you that urban wildlife is quite important yes yeah okay <laughs> anything you would like to add or any any questions please do speak up i uh, because right now i can you know my entire screen is being saved or so, uh, shared so i can't see your faces so i'm going to you know rely on you guys speaking up if you have any <laughs> questions <laughs> all right so given that urban wildlife is so important pfa decided that you know uh, working to save this wildlife is is something that is really worthwhile and that's that's why they do it so so the way it happens i'll go through the process very briefly so the first step is to rescue any animals that may be injured or lost or often and uh, the, what happens is a 24/7 helpline and anyone who sees an animal in need calls up the helpline and then our rescuers sort of rush to that spot and bring the animal back to our rescue center 
so you can see here various different animals being rescued. And just to point out that these kind of rescues should only be, be done by trained experts, especially, you know, possibly venomous snake still happens. In fact, almost every week we have par parakeets, what many think of as parrots, like the green bird in the lower corner, um, rescued from fortune tellers um, all over our city. And many people, you know, get sort of fooled by this, thinking the bird is somehow aiming for one card and therefore it's somehow uh, telling their fortune. But what really happens is these birds have their wings clipped and kept in cages and usually kept, you know, without much food. And then little treats are kept under the cards. So when the cage is open, the bird sort of heads for those cards which have the treats under them. Right. So these are the tricks used and people get fooled by them. Even recently, just uh, last week, we got two parakeets, uh, which someone brought saying that I told, you know, one relative, I love birds. So they gave me two caged birds. So you can see how ironic and, you know, sort of a lack of thought that if you love a bird, why would you keep it caged? Right. So luckily, this person brought it to us. And we will see what happens to it next. So the next step is to, if the animal is injured, to do a diagnosis of what the problem is and to give it the right treatment. So this is uh, the second step called recovery. And you can see here we have a range of different animals being examined by our vets. Now, the third creature here, the pangolin, some of you may know. It's a type of anteater, and it's found on the outskirts of Bangalore as well. And we got this really funny call from someone who said they had found a baby dinosaur. <laughs> so, and, you know, we were really puzzled. So we asked them, can you please send a photograph? And this is what they sent. So this is not a dinosaur. It's just an anteater. And very sadly, it's a, it's a victim of uh, human ignorance because a lot of people use its scales um, for you know some superstitious beliefs so unfortunately even though this is a completely harmless creature it is uh, you know killed in large numbers so uh, luckily this one was able we were able to save it uh, so moving yeah <laughs> exactly so you can see why that person thought and most people have never seen a pangolin in real life nor have i so yeah so just to give you an idea our um, wildlife hospital has all the you know equipment that you see in a regular human hospital and many of the same procedures have to be done so here you can see a turtle um, where the shell has broken the shell is like bone and it had to be uh, surgically sort of stitched together with these pins and then it will fuse eventually and become better but this poor turtle like many animals was trying to cross the road and was hit because of heavy traffic so that's one of the very common injuries we see another very common injury for birds is flying into glass or this horrible thing called manja. I don't know. Do any of you know what I'm talking about? Manja? I know, but I won't tell. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. People use it to fly kites, right? And there's this game that, you know, you fly a kite and your friend flies a kite and you have to cut each other using this thread, right? And to make that more effective, they coat the thread with glass, powdered glass. And what happens is after a kite is cut, that piece of thread goes and lands on a tree or somewhere and gets entangled in birds feathers and thousands of birds literally, you know, are affected by this. And, you know, what should be what appears to most as a harmless game ends up causing so much harm and suffering. So I would really say even if you have to take one sort of thing away from today's session it would be please encourage anyone you know who flies kites not to use this glass and covered manja and nowadays they are using not even cotton thread they're using this nylon thread which is even more deadly it's called chinese manja so yeah, yeah this and it's actually been banned by the government it's illegal to use but again it 
the use continues. So yeah, like, you know, with human babies and, you know, injured people, we need to give medicines and various therapies. So our vets have been trying both, you know, um, standard medicines, but they also try uh, alternative therapies like infrared therapy and acu acupuncture and things like that on animals. Uh, next, the next step, so after rescue and recovery, we have rehabilitation. This is the step where we need to let the animal heal completely. We may also need to provide it with survival skills. If it has come to us as a baby or a pet, it may not know how to survive in the wild. So we have to sort of slowly encourage it to get its wild instincts back. So, so you can see here various baby animals being fed. Um, it's a long process for them to slowly grow into adults. And this is one example uh, of how, you know, human ignorance works. This was a jackal that was a puppy found near a farm. And a family thought that it's just a regular stray dog puppy. And they just tied it up inside the house and they fed it curd rice. And then they realized as it was growing up, it was looking dangerously like some wild animal and not like a dog. So they called PFA to come and take it away. And we realized that this, no, it didn't harm them because it, it had right from uh, as a puppy. But as it grew up, it was, it didn't behave like a stray dog, right? Obviously, it still had, it's a wild animal, right? So, yeah. So we brought it to the center. We have this huge enclosure we made for it. And in fact, they even constructed, you know, these natural sort of to give it a natural feeling, these kind of a den so that it could go and uh, sit inside. And, you know, we had to slowly wean it off from human contact. So we stopped. We have put it in a place where there's no human contact. It can't see human beings. Sorry. And it also, um, you know, had to be weaned off this curd rice diet and back to its regular meat diet. So over many, many months, we had to work with it and slowly get it back and, you know, recover its wild instincts so that we had the confidence that if it was released into the wild, it would be able to hunt again and survive. So it, it can be a long process of rehabilitation. And then, of course, after those three steps, our favorite step, which is the release. It's not a zoo. We don't, as far as possible, we avoid keeping animals um, for a long period. So releasing them back into the natural habitat is the main purpose. And you can see here, we, it's a very joyous uh, feeling, you know, when you see a bird flying away or a squirrel, you know, running as fast <laughs> as it can away from you. So it feels really good to release animals again. So here's a short video. You may not be able to hear it. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. There's no, no one speaking. So. So um, PFA so far has rescued more than 35,000 animals and of 210 different species. And the majority of these animals have been released back into the wild. So you can see how these numbers start to add up and how it can make a real difference to the ecosystem. And of course, many people, when they hear about all this, would like to know, you know how they can participate. So here's our request to you that First of all, spread awareness that urban wildlife is important. And if you see a, an animal in need, to please call PFA. And there's also a passive adoption program where if you're interested, uh, you can provide something for the care of an animal that's in PFA. Of course, you won't get to take it home and cuddle it, but you can provide a you know, long distance adoption. Uh, or you can also volunteer, which we have lots of very lovely, dedicated volunteers from school, college, and beyond who provide various services. Some, you know, help with the cleaning or cutting of fruits for the 
animals, some, uh, you know, uh, after a little experience, help with the feeding, some help with um, the campus because it's a big campus. So some who have gardening experience have helped plant things. So various different. And I myself am a volunteer and I do school outreach. So, and of course, most important of all, please call PFA yourself if you ever see an injured animal. Yeah, so that's our our message. And there's a 24-7 helpline. You don't need to note down these numbers because if you just uh, check the internet for PFA Bangalore, the Bangalore part is important because there are branches all over India. So PFA Bangalore will take you to our website. You can see lots of more information, the helpline numbers, and anything else you would like to check. So thank you so much. And that's uh, just the general information about PFA. Uh, anyone, any questions, anything you'd like or comments or anything you'd like to share at this time? It's in Kengiri. So if you know BGS Hospital on Utrahali Road, it's right next to it. Yeah. Um, well, actually, that's a great question. And they do sometimes, especially if they've been in the center for a long time, they do tend to fly back. You know, we've had like, say, for example, recently there was a shikra, which is a type of bird. And it just kept coming, flying back, you know, to the area where it, it was kept. But slowly it gets used to the idea that, you know, now it's not going to be fed anymore. So it has to make its own way. So it it's a sort of a very slow process. So we also have these what is called like a kind of open release thing. So we have these enclosures within the campus, which are completely open, but still provide a little bit of protection. So say for a squirrel that's been released, it's like a halfway house. You know, it can still run about wild and free. But if it feels threatened or something, it can come and hide here for a little bit. So that's sort of the slow process before it gets confidence that, you know, no, I can manage on my own. So, yeah. So any other questions? Yeah, Madhvi, uh, could yeah. you share a little more about the school outreach program? Here? Yes, yes. I'm coming to that next. So I just wanted to check with you guys. This is just the main work of you know, directly rescuing and treating the animals. I'll be moving on to the school outreach next. Uh, but if you have any more questions about this, I can, you know, address those. Sure. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so there's, a, they have various specializations. So actually PFA also runs a free pet clinic and the vets, in the clinic are different from the wildlife vets, right? So just as with medicine, they have various specializations. So we have specially trained wildlife vets. Yeah, 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 sure. Might be the, the, um, yeah. the other, those, go ahead, Suma, go ahead, Suma. Yeah, I just had a quick question. Uh, so about the snake, uh, yeah. Madhvi, uh, you will rescue only if they're injured um, yes, or yes. if if it's come into somebody's house yeah and actually things. both things so it depends so what if it's you know it's just in someone's say for example someone's garden right and in they're in a relatively wild space then we will encourage them to just stay away from the snake and let the snake go about its way right but if it's actually come inside a house right or it's injured in some way or lost or it's a baby or it's snake eggs or something like that. Only then we rescue it. So our basic, the philosophy is that this wild animal, we we take away from its, um, you know, space only if it we are sure it won't be able to manage there, right? So inside a house, it may not be able to make its way out again. So that's why we would go and rescue it in that, that case. And in that case, we would keep it only for a very short time just to make sure it's not dehydrated and it's sort of the stress level goes down. And then we, you know, release it within a day or two. So it's not kept for very long. And uh, for animals like that, for snakes and maybe even bigger animals, sometimes we do 
take the help of the forest department to find appropriate places where they can be released. Uh, like the Turahali forest is one of the areas where we do release snakes and other larger animals. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. One. Go ahead, Nilima. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I was just trying to I know for a fact that um, the PFA also works with the legal uh, part of it and this is uh, not I mean it's a two part question one is do you do um, awareness for example snake awareness and stuff for apartments and stuff like that yeah so we don't go to apartments per se but we do have an overall education program so any we encourage visitors to the center and all visitors to the center you know get a tour get some information about the various different things that happen so similar to the presentation i've just given you uh, most visitors to the center would be you know informed in a similar way um, so right now we don't have anything where we go to you know rw ways and things but we do have a school outreach where we speak about these things in school. okay and, so uh, but i mean so i know that hmm. uh, you know uh, pfa also works a lot with the legal uh, right. you know, uh part of all of this and like uh i know for a fact that even with pet mm -hmm. uh rules things like uh, uh a lot of apartments they bring their own rules that's not allowed in the uh, uplifts or such things. Right. right. Uh, so, uh, is there any sort of help that that can be? Yeah. So no. In so this is this is why I, I sort of differentiated PFA Bangalore. So PFA as an organization was started mainly for pets, strays, and domestic animals. But PFA Bangalore decided to go in a slightly different direction and work exclusively with wildlife so pf takes you may have heard of pfa because many of the other branches do work and then yeah okay got it. thank you and uh if i know people uh, who are petting a lot of different kind of birds so uh, these birds are not uh I, how to identify whether these are wildlife part of wildlife or these are yeah, this is just to call the PFA helpline and send a photograph. They'll, they'll, uh, you know, we have WhatsApp numbers, so you can send a photograph of the bird, and they will be able to guide you. So we, there's a loophole in the law where um, Indian wildlife is protected, and so Indian wild birds you cannot be kept as pets, but some uh, foreign birds internationally, you know, are smuggled into the country and sold in pet shops, right? One of the very common ones are those budgies, budgigers, which are called uh, lovebirds, if you've uh, seen those in cages. That, unfortunately, those birds are not covered by our, our laws, so nothing can be done. This is a big loophole in international wildlife law, so hopefully something will be done about it. But until then, if you do see anyone with caged birds and you would like to do something about it, please do call PFA, send a photograph of the bird and they'll be able to guide you, whether it's a local wild bird or whether it's one of these uh, birds that have been smuggled in. So, Avinash, you have? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Avinash. Yeah. No, uh, Madhavi, you were, you know, the you began with this uh, thing about you know the the role of urban yes. wildlife mm -hmm. uh, you know the mm -hmm. ecosystem services etc so uh, you know what one was wondering is if we look look at specific species say as the pariah kite mm -hmm. or the owls or right. you know some of them which have a very clear kind of role mm -hmm. in urban ecology right exactly uh, uh, the, the so populate understanding their populations, understanding what is happening to their populations, mm. and understanding as a consequence of the impact on their populations what is happening uh, to the quote unquote ecosystem, right. to, this, to the earth. These kind of understandings at a more macro scale, mm. Mm. does PFA actually get into it or does it partner with research institutions? And right. So, so as of yeah. yeah, so as of now, we don't formally have any kind of partnership. So how it works typically is researchers from research institutions just come and spend time in the center, 
and just you know either observing the animals or trying you know um, we share our statistics of rescues and things with them so we don't directly we are not directly involved in that sense so uh, we do have researchers from you know various research institutions coming to pfa for the, for that yeah does that answer your question but pfa itself as an organization is not directly involved with the research we just are you know help them out with providing you know whatever information and data that we can sure thanks yeah. thanks Maria. Okay. any more questions should i move on yeah, thank you. So one one question. Sure, sure. Of course. Yeah. So do you guys do anything anything to with uh, these petting stores that no. you go? So, yeah. So unfortunately, as I said, there are loopholes in the law. So many of these pet stores actually legally operate. Of course, you know, there are some that have, you know, a combination of both legal as well as illegal animals. And it's very hard to track down. So as of now, we are still very much reliant on people reporting to PFA. So if people, for example, have seen clearly that a pet store has, you know, illegal Indian wildlife, then they can report to PFA and we report that to the forest department to take action. PFA directly, of course, cannot take action other than going and rescuing an animal. So we do, we have had rescues done with the help of the police and the forest department from fortune tellers and from these illegal pet stores but those that are have operating legally unfortunately we can't do anything so our request is just to the general public to understand you know that this is many of these animals are after all wildlife taken from their natural habitats and you know kept in cages and it's it's very cruel as well as destroying ecosystems somewhere else so yeah thank you Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So we'll move on. Um, this was basically gen about PFA in general. Um, I'll play now a short video that gives you a little bit of an idea of what our school outreach is, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that. So I'm going to just one second. Yeah. So I'm just going to play this uh, short preview of our school modules uh, just to give a very very brief idea of the kind of thing that we are doing Yeah, so that was basically a very brief preview of the range of topics we've been covering as part of our school outreach program. So we, um, for presenting these, we go to schools and we present it to school children um, in you know grades three to ten, and we also encourage the schools to come on field trips to the PFA center where they can see the animals for themselves and sort of get a first-hand experience of you know the effect of human beings on our wildlife so that's what the school program does so i'm i'm i thought that since this is bio we could go and explore that uh, if you notice there's one section on lakes we can go into that in a little more detail next but if you have any questions on what you just saw about the school outreach um, we could i could answer them now
<laughs> so then you will be looking at some one of them now so you can tell me if this is appropriate for a 27 year old and uh, in fact i we even have some little you know activities or games whatever you'd like to call them which we have with children which if we have time we can play those as well and so certainly if you think that's something that you know an adult our audience would also be interested in maybe we can look into expanding beyond schools like reaching out to rwas and things like that so <laughs> so uh, madhvi just to understand this so sure. these modules that you uh, think so you once a school kind of uh, engages with yes. pfa the, and says okay we want to do this you come on a either a weekly whatever there's a scheduled thing and you actually come and spend time in the school yes. delivering yes. this is it yes yes exactly so the school uh, we just allow the school to go at the pace that they like because different schools of course have different priorities and how they want to do it so we we just any the moment a school shows interest we we give them this information they can even pick and choose if they think that you know they may not have time for all eight modules but they'd like to do at least a few with their children so which grades which modules we sort of work typically there's a coordinator on, on the school at the school uh, site and we work with them to kind of figure out the whole program for that school and then of course the school also comes for field trips to the center so it's kind of a combination of all these things so uh, great i mean i if i facilitate for my children's mm. school it's a kind of a part community school and okay. uh, part, yeah oh great i mean that yeah. would be wonderful we are always looking to improve I've, more schools so <laughs> no i i've already done a round with them they have some something called parent okay. explorations right so every so parents get involved in every uh, kind of uh, uh, you know every month or something for example they have done gardening ah, and lakes okay. with the kids already uh, so it would be very nice to bring you in and then kind of the kids also get bored of us <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah i mean that would be wonderful so uh, what i can do is i'll share this video uh, on the group as well so you have the number and the uh you know thing and there's also the same information on the website so you can write to us you can even just contact me directly and right. we can take it forward so wh whichever way you'd like to proceed and we are more than happy to do include more schools we also have uh, camps uh, on a regular basis so usually on weekends or during the holidays so we have in the past had winter camps during the winter holidays and summer camps during the summer holidays so that's like where children come and spend you know um over a period of a week or something like that and you know we involve them much more with the center so lovely yeah. lovely and one very very specific very selfish question is there is there a chance to bring uh, kids along and we want to see a loris oh <laughs> that's I'm that's struggling a, with yeah, that yeah no that's a, just a chance thing so pfa definitely i think they operate quite ethically so no animal is kept longer than it needs to so the animal is all, interest is always uh, first and foremost so the moment an animal is healthy and ready for the wild it's released so even i i wouldn't be able to even guarantee what animal you'll see next sure. week <laughs> you know <Sure. laughs> so yeah but that's just the nature of the work so, uh but just to let you know out in a very internal place away from human beings but right now they are building a special enclosure where there will be a glass yeah so so i just wanted to ask you guys i have gone much i i mean you've taken much longer <laughs> than i thought so there's i don't think i will be able to do everything that i planned for the rest of the session so uh, uma this is a question for you as well since you kind of know what i, I had in mind so huh. there are uh, uh, together 16 minutes long about lakes and that's one of the modules that we have for school children and uh, the special interest with biome is that we interviewed various people for these videos and suma rao is one of them so <laughs> so she is one of the stars of the video 
Um, so that's one part. The other is that we do, as I mentioned, have these little games and activities which we have for children. And I thought, you know, it might be fun to play that with you guys. But uh, I don't think we have time for both. So I will leave it to you, Uma, and the rest of, you know, what would you prefer to do? Or should we do the videos and then just, you know, try as many games as possible with the remaining time? Um, so is it necessary to see both the videos? Not really, not really. Because uh, the reason we split it up is that, you know, 15 minutes long video for children, they might get stuck to, you know, their attention will flag and there'll be a little bit of fatigue. So the idea is to limit, keep it shorter so that we can have a break and then, you know, discuss what we've just seen, take questions, all that stuff, right? So that's why we've split it up. So the first part of the video is deals with basically just information about lakes, you know, what, how the lakes have formed in Bangalore and, you know, what, what purpose they serve, uh, both in the past as well as currently. The second part of the video focuses more on the problems and solutions. So, you know, what are the kinds of problems that have occurred with our lakes and how people are solving them and how kids can get involved. So that's how it is. So part one is mostly just information. Part two is kind of problems and solutions. So, Let's play uh, the part two. No, I even have a thing. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Two major challenges for any lake, okay? Uh, they are sewage and encroachment. All of these lakes are polluted. Um, it is uh, domestic sewage um, or treated wastewater or uh, industrial effluents. Everything is being let into the lake. The moment it becomes dry in one dry year, people are trying to take it over for a mall or for a garbage dump or for some other kind of uh, use. So that's the biggest problem. Even when the lakes are there, people are pumping in sewage. People always try to grab parts of the lake to build on them. When builders take over a land and start developing an apartment uh, complex or maybe a, a software park, the first casualty, the first to go are the wetlands because, oh, we can just fill this up and build over it. A few years back, um, there was a lot of foam in the lake, a lot of plastic and litter at the edges. The lake was on fire and there was like a lot of smoke everywhere and the building right near Population, we are too many of us. We have taken over the space of all the other. If something is getting extinct, it's because we are increasing in number. The rate of growth uh, has gone much faster than any planning system can handle. As a consequence, our lakes has been receiving wastewater because everybody releases wastewater. The fact that we are thinking of lakes as parks. You know, lakes are ecological spaces with wetlands. They have a certain ecosystem process. When you convert them into jogging areas, uh, park parks, some medicinal garden, some ornamental garden, then lookout places for people. It's all very nice from a people point of view, but you're restricting the water area. and You're often planting these exotic species. So it's really disrupting the ecosystem. Any biodiversity has a hard time in a place like Bangalore because there are a lot of things going on. There's traffic near many of these lakes. We put on lights at night. So insect uh, breeding cycles are affected because of the light. And that means birds which eat insects are affected. Then there's air pollution. So the plants that many of these uh, feed on, again, they have, they, are, they have a lot of toxins. And because insects eat these plants, then the toxins concentrate more in those insects. I have always believed in people's power more than anyone else. I really believe that for good or bad, if we get together, we can really make the world a wonderful place or make it hell. A large number of us, once we start looking at the positives, that we can do something, we can do something more, the problem of water will automatically vanish. And I'm sure 
children will come up with so many beautiful ideas i've been proudest of the young kids that i've seen the young people that i work with and they're the ones who are who are hopeful of a future who are not resigned about oh this is going to happen anyway no it's not negotiable for them believe that we can do things and uh, there are so many good people and good groups across bangalore that have been doing a lot of things with lakes for a long time so you look at the communities that have restored jaipur lake rajanhalli lake kaikondrali lake the jp nagar put in halli lake you know groups that are doing incredible hard work there are many of these groups across bangalore being very successful is where the government agencies have identified local communities or local communities have identified government agencies and work with them you need that partnership on my balcony i could see this lake dying and for about a year and a half i said someone else will take over and will do something about the lake so i said then i can't wait for this somebody so let me start something about it because i don't want to have it on my conscience that the lake died in before my eyes and i kept quiet about it we work very closely with the government in fact and with the residents in the area where do we get money from because from day one we have been raising money to maintain the lake and that has been through donations from the locality we had already been inviting our residents in the area for weekend gardening it's not enough that you just come and plant a tree like a vip and you go off and forget about it when the place was full of mothers fathers children grandparents everybody digging and dividing and plucking and what not a group of people together uh, were all living around the lake and decided to start working with the bbm there's a wetland at the back so we got the wetland protected as is and we made sure that the walking path it was supposed to cut through the wetland so that people could see the birds nesting and we said that's not required because the birds will not nest if people are walking up and down today we have planted these trees we have a a uh, large compartment land birds also because these lakes attract some close to the under protective species of birds the jogging path that they put is about 15 feet high 30 feet wide as if you are going to run marathon uh, on those uh, lake jogging path it is not necessary we have made sure that the jogging path need not have to be elevated they can be at the ground level so that water can from the surrounding area can still flow in When we walked around the lake before the restoration, there were about 20-25 species of birds. And post restoration, it took some time, but there are well over a hundred species of birds. We get pelicans, we get painted storks in the hundreds. I mean, it's a brilliant sight. It's really a success. Uh, we started off with 125 saplings, and now I'm guessing it's somewhere between 475 to 500 trees. Uh, there are 111 species of birds have been spotted at the lake along with fish and butterflies and uh, dragonflies so many kinds of insects it's a beautiful natural world and it is this uh, change in the ecosystem that gives strength to me and my friends to do better and better People should also visit the lake because it's like a really beautiful place to see the birds and other creatures. Youngsters can do a lot. Apps available on the internet, like iNaturalist, and I can uh, take snapshots of uh, the lives that you see around the lake and upload it on uh, to iNaturalist. See if you can plant a tree in some area near the lake. See if you can volunteer in trash pickups. You know, just just get involved on a day-to-day -day basis. Find excuses to save the lake in your neighborhood. This is not a miracle. It is something which is very possible that for people can get together and work with the government to save the lake. Tell your parents to save a lake. Okay. make the world a better place for you okay so that's the end of our lakes video uh, what did you guys think any any feedback <laughs> i mean it didn't 
it doesn't seem like a video made i mean I, I, except for that cute music and the you know the questions coming on it doesn't really seem like a video made for kids as such so right very, right it's, yeah it's, perfect for 27 plus uh, <laughs> yeah so the idea was also we had to you know we wanted it to be accessible to a range of ages so you know we had to keep sort of it simple but not too trivial where the 10th graders would get bored so we tried to sort of have a balance and um, you know most of it was shot during the pandemic when they were locked down so as suma knows i did the call with her over zoom because <laughs> that's the only thing that was possible in some cases we were at least able to you know when the lockdown had finished but the pandemic was still on but uh, we were able to go and stand by the side of the lake and you know interview the person but the majority of interviews were just done over zoom so yeah that's a, a limitation but that's uh, <laughs> the best we could do at that time so hey, uh... Um, really like it the way it's oh, come nice. out it's nice wonderful. thank you so much thank, thank you. you so much for participating it was really nice that you could <laughs> yeah and just to let you know you know so many kids have seen this now <laughs> so so yeah. so you made all these videos madhvi no no so there's oh. a there was another person who oh. has training in design so i basically would just uh you know select the clips from the various interviews that i did and mm-hmm. then she put it together with the you know the graphics in between and the music and things so so i would just string together the clips that i wanted and then she 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 put in the design elements very nice very cute video oh nice thank you yeah it was <laughs> it was a little difficult because uh, we had literally hours of uh, you know recorded interview time and we had to i mean no way we could show it all to the kids because you know just the time limitation and just in terms of attention span so we were forced to take little bits from here and there so it i mean it might seem a little choppy uh, at par- at times and uh, I'm sorry, Suma. We couldn't include more of you know your all the things you said, but yeah, we had to. No, just no, no. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't. It shouldn't <laughs> be like that. It's going to yeah. be a boring one then. Yeah. No. The whole so, idea was no, to, this is come out to have really like a right. range of different people talking, not just you know academics and not just uh, ordinary people, but just sort of you know all kinds of. So that's why we had. one of my friends daughters soha also speaks <laughs> as a representative of school children so that was the whole idea that we involve different kinds of residents of our city absolutely so yeah. any questions or comments any feedback happy to always happy to get feedback if you think something could be done better or nice with you okay so then maybe we should move on to the games since uh, sure sure yeah i think we are already at 5 <laughs> yes. so, okay so i'll just close this and reshare my screen because the games are again on my friend of four okay so this is just ordinary actions that many of us may do uh you know every day and just to think about whether this is something that's nature friend really or not right so let's start so when it's hot and dry i put out a bowl of water for both like answering that one friend am i a friend or foe friend friend okay um that was to do i think Sorry, Shivanand son. Four. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Four. Somebody said four. Okay. Uh, those who answered, do you want to explain why your answer was friend of four? Uh, uh, it's because it's leftover food and it may not be good for the birds. Yeah, you're right. That's absolutely right. Very often, the type of food we are giving the birds is not suitable, and also sometimes in the case of these pigeons. uh because of getting this kind of food so easily their population has exploded and it they have actually become almost a pest level they carry very 
very, very dangerous diseases which they pass on to human beings. So in fact, that's one of the reasons we cannot accept pigeons in PFA because there's a risk to all the other animals there if we do. So, um, so of course, our suggestion is just, you know, grow lots of native plants which will provide them with natural food instead. Yeah. Okay, next one. I saw a snake in the park. I just stood quietly and did nothing. Am I a friend or foe? Friend, Thanks. that's right. Very nice. Uh, most animals attack only when they feel threatened. Snakes in particular. Humans are not their natural food. They don't want to attack us. It's a waste of their energy. But if we panic and run around and shout, then they feel as if we are attacking them and that's why they attack in turn. So as long as we stay out of the way and just try to give them space to escape, most of the time they will do nothing. Yeah. So definitely friend. Okay. I saw a cute little squirrel on the ground. I picked it up and I petted it. Am I a friend or foe? Foe. Foe. Very nice. Why do you say foe? That was Abhi, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's her. Oh, <laughs> that's why I'm asking. Why four? Would you like to explain? Abhi? Okay, doesn't matter. We'll, <laughs> we'll discuss. So basically, as we said in the previous one, the wild animals are best left alone. You know, when you pick them up, they might get threatened. They may, might bite you. You might end up hurting them or stressing them out. They may also carry diseases, which they may pass on to you. So best thing to do when you see a wild animal is just let it be. Don't go close. Don't pick it up. And if you think there's something wrong and it needs help, you can always call PFA. Yeah. So there's a bird's nest in, with chicks in my garden. And I often go close to it just to check. Am I a friend or foe? Foe. So Oh, very good. You're giving all the right answers. That's right. Because if we keep going close to the nest, the parents are watching. And we are huge, big monsters compared to birds, right? So <laughs> they will think we are going to do something to them and they will abandon the nest. They will leave the nest and go away. And the poor babies will not get food. So the best thing to do is just watch from a distance. If you have binoculars, great. But never go close to a nest with chicks. Okay. Friend or foe. I carry my own water bottle from home wherever I go. Yes. Friend. Yes. Very nice. Best friend. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> One of the biggest, uh, you know, things where single-use plastics happens is water bottles, right? So let's avoid those as much as we can. So, other thing is, see, uh, in, uh, in the previous session, you were telling, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the for kite flying, they will use that manja and all. Yes. So, one feedback what I got is like while uh -huh. going for one of the um, one of the walkathon, you no. Know, okay. The, uh, in the hotels, what will they do? The threads they used to tie the parcel, you no. Know? Even that uh -huh. is also like we have observed, like that is also very dangerous for the birds. They okay. legs get okay. entangled. You know? Right, right. No, you yeah. may be right. You may be right because what happens is quite often this lands up in mixed garbage, right? And mm. some birds do forage through garbage, and yeah. especially if the garbage is just dumped on the street, right, and not handled in a scientific way. So it's very likely that that could also have. We have seen during the pandemic, you know, these are uh, disused the used masks, right, were thrown along with mixed waste and landed up on the street. And because they have those, uh, you know, the ear things, those would get entangled around animal, uh, animals and things. So you are absolutely right. We do have to be very conscious about all these things. Okay. Regarding so, single-use plastic, yeah. Um, yeah. there was, uh, so if you can, everyone can just search YouTube. There is a video of a snake with its head caught in a bisleri mm -hmm. or a pork bottle. And uh, it's, it's it had gone viral some time ago, but yeah, it's it's a really sad. I mean, it's, yeah, no, I mean, one of the biggest problems is that our waste disposal isn't done well, right? It, so much of it lands up in mixed uh, landfills or mixed garbage on the street, and that's where it causes the greatest harm. So, um, okay, friend or foe? 
this is a kind of tricky one i don't i don't let my pet cat roam around outside my home am i a friend or foe say friend friend okay can you say why so because so we had that experience that was very small cat uh okay small kitten so like yeah it was always right. the our gate level there was a cleaning mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. outside the house and all it it went out right right yeah yeah so you're absolutely right it's a uh, it's dangerous this for the cat itself as well as the wild any cat roaming around in trees so feral cat thousands but millions of birds every year so the natural ecosystem so uh, pet cats are best kept inside the house <laughs> okay when i go to the lake i feed hungry ducks some bread this is as you may have seen in lalbagh and stuff this is such a common practice i have almost never gone to lalbagh and you know someone or the other is doing this so yeah i see this every morning in sankhya exactly exactly and most of the people who are doing this believe they are doing something very uh, very good right for the animals so what do we think is it friend or foe uh, it's a foe only yes so oh, like we said with the food for the pigeons and things right our food is not good for birds particularly stale bread is not good for ducks and in normal conditions unless there's some really you know some environmental disaster or some extreme weather or something let wild creatures find their own food don't interfere right okay i release my pet turtle into the lake nearby am i a friend of four friend okay you have given it friend. its freedom is that why yeah okay yeah that's that's a good i mean it's a nice thought it is nice that if and more animals have freedom but unfortunately in this case many of the pets that are there are actually not indian at all they come from very far off places like this this turtle in the picture is called a red-eared slider from a america and it has it does it really has a very it's called a invasive which means that it's not it doesn't belong here and it has come here and it really causes a lot of harm to the natural ecosystem that is here so when whenever we introduce something new from outside from some foreign place into our natural ecosystem there could be a very negative effect right so best thing keep your pets with you for their whole life inside your house <laughs> yeah and so uh, connecting yeah. to what you had said earlier yeah. right that a turtle is a wild animal and indian law forbids yeah. uh, indian wildlife from being kept as pets so if somebody right. has a turtle as a pet then it is unlikely mm. to be an indian turtle exactly exactly unlike unless of course it's illegally kept which also yeah. happens because there's this thing called you know these star tortoises which are very very a uh, big favorite of the pet tree Right, uh, right most of them get smuggled out of the country by them okay friend of four when i see a cool creature i take a photo and share it with friends friend i think this yeah, should be okay friend right? because you know the more people know about wildlife and the more people appreciate it the more you know the more you love wildlife the more you will think about it and take care of it. so i i would definitely say friend and of course this is assuming you're not going close to a nest or using a flash or disturbing the creature in some way yeah okay so that's the end of our first game uh, should we play one more yeah we still yeah. have some time yeah okay all right let's go so this is all about insects okay most of us are a little bit uh, 
you know, scared of all these creepy crawlies, but insects are amazing and they have these amazing superpowers. So some of you may know what these pictures that are there. Those of you who like superheroes, this is, anyone knows who these two superheroes are? Ant-Man. Yes, wonderful. That's right. This is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. So, okay. So this is like a match, matching. Okay. So the first thing is I can lift 20 times my weight. That's like you lifting a car. Which of these, which of these amazing insects do you think can do this? Ant. Very good. That's right. It is ant. Okay, next one. I jump so far, it's like you jumping across a football field in one jump. Which animal can do that? Grasshopper. Wonderful. You're right. It is grasshopper. Okay, I can fly five times as fast as you can run. Who does this? Butterfly. Uh, think how a butterfly flies. Do you think it's flying very fast? Look around, look around the six. There's one. Is it dragonfly? Yes, it's a dragonfly. They can zip really fast. Okay, this is a very weird one. I am the deadliest animal in the world. You would think deadly animal will be lion or tiger or snake or something like that, right? Cockroach. But it's actually an insect. Think, think, think. Look around. Cockroach. Okay. Anything else which could be? Mosquito. Mosquito. Yes, because mosquitoes spread so many diseases, right? Like malaria and dengue and chikungunya and cause the most human deaths every year. Okay, next one. I migrate hundreds of miles before the monsoon. Hundreds of miles. Such a tiny little insect. Yes, you may have heard of the monarch butterfly in, the, uh, in America, which flies all the way from North America down to Mexico. We have such amazing butterflies right here in South India. Just before the monsoon, they fly from the west to the east to you know, escape the heaviest monsoon which comes in the Western Ghats area, right? So, yeah, so every year they migrate back and forth. So it's all happening right here. We, in Bangalore, we see them sometimes, you know, just in, uh, in May, end of May, just before the rains begin, you'll see these clouds of butterflies all flying in one direction because they are trying to escape before the monsoon comes. Okay, and the last one now, of course, we all know which one it is. I can live for weeks without my head. Cockroach. Cockroach, yes. <laughs> there, we are so familiar with it, but it has this amazing superpower. So, okay, those are the answers. Okay, next set. I can walk upside down on the ceiling. Which one? Upside down on the ceiling. Lizard. You're right. Lizards can do that. You're absolutely right. But can we choose among these six insects? It's something that comes in your house. You've surely seen it. Uh, not quite. Okay, it's a house fly. A fly has these special, if you've ever looked at a fly in very great detail, you'll see they have these sharp, pointy, you know, almost like spikes all along their legs, right? Have, if you've ever seen that. So that is what helps them walk on vertical surfaces upside down any which way you know <laughs> okay okay next one i hear ultrasound and can see ultraviolet both of which human beings can't do so this really has some superpowers these are tough ones madhvi yeah <laughs> okay this is a moth moths as you know are you know mostly awake uh, at night and that's why their hearing is amazing. They can, you know, hear much better than us. And they also have the ability to see much more ultraviolet part of the spectrum, you know, beyond what we can see as humans. Okay, next one. I help farmers control pests. Those of you who have gardens might know this one. It's always called a farmer's friend. What? Sorry? Someone Did said something. I didn't hear. Wasp. Wasp. 
uh, not quite you are right the wasps are helpful because they also pollinate many plants but this is a pest controller it eats up other other things which come and eat up the plants so this is actually a ladybug a ladybug beetle you know number 6 this is something that's very helpful if you see this in your garden you should be very happy because it's going to gobble up all the other things that you don't want on your plants okay so okay next one this is also amazing one out of every four bites of your food is because i pollinate crops yes you're right that's why if you've been following the news that in america there's been this whole bee colony collapse right where a huge number of bees have died and they are not quite sure of the reasons but it's a huge it's a crisis because this is you know hugely needed for our own food uh, creation so okay going on i can live for 17 years just imagine a small little insect i think 17 years is more than the boy who has been answering if i'm right Yeah 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 he's just yeah. <laughs> So this insect is older than you <laughs> Moth Moth no Moth no, no. Ah So this is an insect called a cicada it actually lives underground there are some species which can live underground it's called a kind of hibernation for 17 years and then they all come out at once and they make loud sounds <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah yeah so it's it's a form of hibernation they live underground so they go into this dormant stage yes they live more than 17 years because they this is a sort of their life cycle so in one part of their life cycle they live underground and they are alive but completely dormant so <laughs> all right the last one this is also last really amazing yes i invented paper i built my nest out of it the remaining one come on guys which one we didn't yeah answer actually was wow. so, last one yes. so there are these species called paper wasps and human beings it's actually thought that in china they they actually thought of creating paper by observing these paper wasps they basically chew up plant material create a paste and when that paste dries it becomes like paper so that's exactly how paper is created by humans right so amazing we actually learned from this wasp how to create paper <laughs> all right do we have time for one last game sure it is seven more minutes or so okay So I have two games. Uh, Uma, you want to select one, the uh, rhymes one or the connection one? <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. No, you only select Madhuri. Okay. Um. Actually, if you don't mind, uh, just going five minutes over time, we can do both. So we can go quickly through both. Would you like to do that? Let's do the rhymes one first. Yes. Oh, sure. Okay. So this is basically a. Uh, an incomplete rhyme and the last word is missing and you have to fill in the last word okay which animal does the rhyme describe so the prettiest insects you will meet meet these flowers with our feet in myriad colors flutter by so many types of no, remember it has to rhyme. Uh, rhyme with the butterfly yes butterfly <laughs> So see, meet and feet, and buy and fly. Right. So that's how it works. Butterfly. Okay. Next one. I will sting is what you fear, but that's only if you're near. For your food, you all need me. Working hard, the busy. B. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Next. Bell-shaped flowers I pollinate with long bill. I nectar take. I don't hum. That's so absurd. I am a beautiful. Uma can answer this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I shouldn't. I know it. <laughs> it okay. has to rhyme with absurd. Okay, Suma. Lady bird. Uh, it's something that has to rhyme with absurd. So it's close, but it's a bird. It's some kind of bird. Dashboard. Okay. <laughs> 
okay. hummingbird yeah so that's why that third line i don't hum mm -hmm. that's so absurd it's a bird called sunbird it's found in bangalore and many people when they see it think it's a hummingbird but we don't have any hummingbirds in india hummingbirds are found only in the americas so that's why many people assume it's a hummingbird but that's why i say i don't hum that's so absurd <laughs> okay so that's a sunbird okay most common raptor in the world raptor is a bird that hunts soaring high with wings unfurled not an eagle get that right your clean up crew the black something that rhymes with right right and we we talked about this bird kite yes very yes. good clean up crew right again exactly. the third line is because many people call it eagle but it's not an eagle yeah it's a kite wonderful okay i have no venom and no fangs rodents quell my hunger pangs don't kill me give me a break slim and long the fast rat rhymes with break <laughs> snake yes. yes so rat snakes are one of the most common snakes we see in the city completely harmless to humans and they eat rats and help us out <coughs> okay i aerate soil so plants can grow and he and she in one you know the sight of me may make you squirm and the helpful little <coughs> excuse me right earthworm earthworm Earthworm, right? Yes, very nice, very nice. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a hermaphrodite. Right? Yeah. Okay. So spiny neck and long tail, red in face, shows I'm male. Make bugs vanish like a wizard. I am a common garden lizard. Yes. 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 So as you have seen, lizards have long. a uh, tongues they can put out you know similar to frogs and toads they can put it out and grab insects right so <clears throat> okay i won't win no beauty contest eating bugs is my main interest both on land and water mode i am a watty common rhymes with mode mode and both on land and water i said the word just so good yes so good <laughs> scores of pests i eat a year quiet wings at night appear with big eyes i'm on the prowl let me be i'm just an owl owl right yes so as many of you may know uh, owls unfortunately are one of the saddest victims of our superstitions lots of people you know kill owls for black magic and such things even though they are such helpful birds and they are completely harmless to us so this is another very tragic thing that happens on a fairly large scale <coughs> okay the last one seed dispersers pollinators some are insect terminators we are not pests like my mice and rats we are just harmless flying bats bats that's right, that's right. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. By the way, all these poems have been written by Madhvi. Composed by Madhvi. Yeah. So all these. Excellent, Madhvi. Excellent. Look at that. What? What? Abhi. You can share all this. Sorry, I can't get it. But I'll just start. You can tell me later, just so that we are running out of time. Okay. I'll start the next game. So here is. a very very important idea about the ecosystem it's basically that everything is interconnected right we there's no one thing that exists just by itself in the ecosystem so it's like a web it's not just a food chain but it's a food web and there's so many connections many of which we don't even know about so here are some common animals that we see around bangalore and uh, animals and plants and can you think of some connections between them so for example i'll start i can say like for example you can see a snake that's a rat snake and they eat rats so there's a connection between the snake and the rat right that's a connection so like that can can you suggest two or three more connections
फ्रूट मैंगोट्री purple sunbird and the flower exactly purple sunbird is also a pollinator so it visits the hibiscus flower and helps with its pollination very nice yes dragonfly and mosquito dragonfly yes. and mosquito yes yes very nice exactly dragonflies are you know one of their favorite food is mosquito larvae or in the water okay so here's actually how many connections there are yeah so you can see how closely <laughs> connected it's like a really tightly woven web with connections yes. going in all different directions so here's a question what if we cut down a tree we hear every day that trees are being cut down yeah let's see what happens to this web when we cut down a tree so the tree will disappear and then let's see what happens after that so all we are left with is rats and garbage <laughs> isn't that amazing so the oh. message here is that every living being has an important role to play in the ecosystem let's not up upset the balance yeah all right guys so that's the end of my session it's been really nice thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to all of you uma thanks a lot and i hope you enjoyed it and um, anyone who wants to get in touch with me um can can you share this games share the games uh, i will have to check with pfa i created all these games but i gave them to pfa so now it's really something that pfa has so i okay. will have to check with them before sharing them yeah. okay yeah but if you like i can come to your school and we can do this with your whole class we can play the games with the whole class but of course okay. you can't answer the questions okay <laughs> because you already know the answers <laughs> all right so um yeah please do get in touch if you have questions uma uma i mean i'm part of the friends of my own group you are most welcome to you know message me directly um get in touch and we would love to visit more schools so that's also something you can if you know of anyone who's associated with a school please do get in touch that would be great yeah thank you so much thank you so much madhvi it was such an it was <laughs> not just informative it was in and it was informative and extremely entertaining <laughs> thank Absolutely. you thank you so much this level of participation from everyone <laughs> <laughs> any of our sessions so far this is really nice oh thank you so, so we should invite more people with uh, school outreach programs <laughs> 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 there'll be a lot more participation <laughs> yes but we excellent madhvi excellent oh, and thank you so loved, much uh, love love the games <laughs> thank yeah, you yeah really interesting <laughs> <laughs> nice nice thank you very nice